Hello ladies and gents, Roman Reviews here, please like, comment, subscribe. This is my very quick recap for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 11, what is this, Episode 19, 20, it really doesn't matter, because when I tell you, this episode felt so random, this episode felt like we have a quota to meet, so what else do we got? That's exactly what it felt like. It felt out of place. It didn't feel like a filler because it had a lot of stuff going on. Or I should say the focus was very centralized. But I'm just I'm just over it. I'm ready for the reunion. I'm ready for the show to go so we can focus on Married to Medicine LA more. Which I already have my recap up for that. Um, show some love to that as well as um, my other channel, Romy Whispers ASMR. Please check that out. Links below. Link above. Where do I even begin? Shamari, she had a nice little date. I don't need, if, I don't know if I can call it a date night. She had a nice little date with her husband, Ronnie, and he's just saying how proud he is, how she's become just this dope queen, and she's doing it all, and he's really happy the way how things have turned out. And so she appreciates that. We let's talk about Candy. Candy is opening up another OLG, um, old lady gang space, and I'm proud of her. Definitely proud each time she does something business-wise, and also it's successful. So you get a two-for-one with Candy, so that's great. Here's the thing. She's going to move forward with a surrogacy, as we knew, and... She has a family meeting. Mama Joyce is there, and we see Lil Ace is there. We see Todd there. We see Todd's daughter there. I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. Um, and we see Riley. Todd's daughter didn't really say much, so let's just focus on Riley. They're just saying what's going on, and Riley was over the fact that they want to have another child because Candy still has two of the eggs that she can fertilize and do a surrogacy with. Riley felt like, just like what she said with Ace. It was never that she wasn't happy to have another sibling. That's not the problem. She's not She's not saying that, oh, I don't like him. Or, oh, I just want it to be all about me. Even though that wouldn't hurt. The thing is, she, growing up, felt like she wished she had her mother more at times. So, with her mother being really busy now because she's super successful. She just wants to make sure that her siblings have that same amount of love, um, attention. The love will be there, but attention from Candy. And Candy said, I hear what you're saying. It's fair, but she has the money to have everyone move with her. And, you know, she'll make it work. She'll make it work to where she can be a physical, hands-on parent. And so Riley was still kind of over it. So then we had Todd talking about how he's an only child and he wishes he had siblings to kind of rely on, especially with his mother passing away. And Mama Joyce even said, remember, one of her sons died. Um, so Mama Joyce said that she wished she had, I, I don't know if Candy has another brother, but I know she at least had one who died. And so Mama Joyce said she wished she had more children. You know, she lost one. It's just like, uh. So... Riley said she understands, and so she's not saying it's bad for them to have kids. That's not what she's saying. Again, she's just saying she wants her mom to be there to focus on the children as well and not just say have Riley or someone else raise the baby. That's what she was saying without trying to say it and being rude because it wasn't exactly correct, but I get it. We move on. Let's talk about Nini, Marlo, and Tanya. So we're going to Marlo's place, and Marlo has this nice spread out. I said, okay. I noticed that it said Nini's friend. <laughs> I'm thinking, Lord, Marlo is never getting that peach. <laughs> even though even she ir irked me, but she did bring it this season. So the fact that she didn't get a peach, I'm still kind of looking at Bravo like, what is going on here? Sidebar. Once they all get there... Tanya was the last. So Tanya was like, oh my god, Nene, you look so good. I said, Tanya, I love your bubbly personality. But we know that you and Nene aren't the best of friends. I don't know if you're just trying to show, hey, I really am good with this woman. So let me just show her love. Because I said, Nene looks cute. But, but you're doing a lot right now. <laughs> and I'm only saying that because it's Nene. If it was anyone else, I'd say, that's just Tanya. She's a very nice, bubbly personality. Once we go from the pleasantries, eating, 
just saying how beautiful the wedding is. Marlo comes in with the messiness. Marlo decides, hmm, Marlo does not like Eva. She's never really liked Eva. And now that she has information on Eva, she's going to use it. So Marlo says she has one of Eva's bride, um, you know, what was it? Not maid of honor, but bridesmaids on call. And she's going to call this woman. So she called her up. I'm not saying her name, even though Eva did say her name, because Eva knows who it is. Um, and she just talks about how Eva, you know, she moves around so much because she has credit issues and she's not rich like she said she is or people think that she is. Because Eva never said that she was rich. She talked about designers, but as a model, you get designer clothes. So that's not a flex at all. At all. And Eva never made it seem like it was a flex. She only talked about it when she was being questioned. That's it. And uh, this woman is saying how she moves around a lot. She The issues with her ex. And then there was some other stuff as well. Tanya felt like, eh, this isn't right. We need to go and tell her. And, you know, everyone agreed. But Nini said that she wanted to tell her because she felt like it was, since they're, she's closest to Eva, she felt like it would be respectful it would be received well if she did it. And I said, okay, cool. So we have a plan. Now let's flash forward to Eva, who is clearly hearing so much about this stuff from people that she t goes to Candy. And she talks to Candy about this. She brings it up herself. Candy has no idea what's going on. Candy is just like, yeah, she's getting ready for this launch. And Tanya said, okay, that's great. That's great. Congratulations. But we need to talk about me for a second. Okay. <laughs> and that's when we find out that her bridal party were upset with her and she did confirm some of the things that were said like okay yeah she is saying that I moved around right because she came off of her vacation from her wedding her honeymoon after spending so much on the wedding after sp spending so much um, you know on the honeymoon and then she's going to move into another rental two days later it's a lot going on with eva and so then that even put up sirens and candy said like that's kind of off but again we we're gonna we're gonna back off from that what else do we want to talk about prior to oh nini let's talk about nini and greg when nini was going over to marlo's Greg was on the line and said, you know, please don't stay too long because he needs her. So she said, okay. She gets home and they have this conversation and Nini puts it out there like she was telling us that she thought that she was going to divorce Greg. She loves him, but she doesn't feel like they're in a good place or good space anymore. She's over it. And he even mentioned about, you know, separating. So she was serious about separating. So that's when Greg goes and says, you know what? I don't know how I'm feeling from day to day. There's things going on that I just can't explain. And so I don't feel great. And so I do apologize because I am I know that I'm not easy to deal with. And Nini does acknowledge that she's the type where it's really difficult for her to handle what's happening to Greg. And just that, aside from his person, how he's acting or reacting, just handling that is a lot for her. She's the one where... She more so in a relationship with her partner needs them to like reinforce her, you know, build her up. And so she's constantly feeling torn down and that's why she's having issues. And I completely understood what Nini was saying. The problem is, is that it doesn't matter if I understand. It looks bad. It sounds bad. It's very honest. It's very real. I'm glad for that but it looks and sounds bad because we know greg is the one who's dealing with the cancer and nini acknowledged that she's not the one dealing directly with it but she's with someone who is going through that so huh. and greg said you know he's gonna try to be better he appreciates her for you know sticking it out with him and he's hopeful that she will continue to do so and he said he's gonna try to you know act differently she said okay because she's tired, she's frustrated, completely understand that. 150% understand where Nini's coming from. Problem is, it sounds 
bad and selfish because Greg is the one with cancer. One good thing is that Greg did say that he would go and he was willing to go and talk to the doctor about potential chemo. He did that because originally, remember, he said he wanted to do natural stuff. He didn't want chemo because he didn't want to even feel worse than he feels now. He didn't want his body to get more messed up than it already is. But the reality is, it looks like the cancer isn't going anywhere. And all the alternatives he's been doing has been partially helping, but he's already sick. So he's going to pursue chemo. Or at least his option for chemo, which Nini was happy about. Beginning of the season, that's what she was hoping he would do. We get to Candy's event, because anything else that happened prior to, I'm not concerned with. Let's get to, it looks nice. We saw, you know, Aunt Nora, Aunt Bertha, and <laughs> Mama Joyce all there. And they were going to do, like, I guess, a cupcake creation stand thing. So, that was their contribution, but aside from that... Candy was saying how she's glad she has something to pass down and pass along to her family. And here is the thing. It looks great. No issues with the restaurant. The problems that we do have are everyone comes along. Eva is there. Eve, Tanya sees Eva and then she says, can we talk? So when it's Eva goes outside when Tanya... Now remember... The plan was Nini was supposed to go and tell Eva about this. Tanya felt really bad and decided she was going to go and tell Eva. But you know who co-signed it the day before that didn't say a thing? Miss Cynthia Bailey. I said, you got to be freaking kidding me. So Cynthia, and again, I didn't see the, cl I, I didn't rewatch the clip. I don't know if Tanya told Cynthia that Nini said that she was going to go and say something to her. All I do know is that Cynthia said, if I had a friend and they were going through something like that, I would want to go and arm that with that information instead of going into a situation blind. I 100% agree, but my problem is Nini was supposed to do it. Nini was supposed to do it. And I don't care what anyone says. I believe that Eva would still have been just as upset. But maybe she would have handled it differently. Maybe Nini would have been able to talk her through it differently. So that what happened next didn't happen. Because Tanya told her what Marlo said. T Mar <laughs> Eva does not like Marlo because Marlo does not like Eva. They're equally yoked when it comes to that. And the biggest issue with all of this is that... Eva felt very embarrassed and felt very, very betrayed. So when she got back to the table, she Nini just got there. And Eva said, you know, I have to leave. I have to leave. Bye. And so then now everyone's looking at Nini like, what's going on? No, looking like, what's going on? So that's when Tanya lets me know she felt very guilty. She's a very nice person. Tanya is a very, very nice person. And because she's such a nice person, it's difficult for her to be putting these situations and I respect the fact that she's not changing just because cameras are around or a paycheck is included the problem is is that we then got this response um where Eva took off everything and left she got in her car and left when she, Nini had to call her and tell her to come back and said that I'll agree no cameras now the cameras were far away apparently Eva's husband was there too. I'm not sure how long this was. I don't know if Eva lives close there. Wow. Okay. But what I do know is that when it ends up happening is Eva comes back and she's talking to Nini and whew, it's, it's dark outside even though it's daytime. So it's dark in here. Anyway. And that cause, and so she lets it be known. She moves around from place to place because she has issues with her ex-husband. That's Kevin McCall, the rap, the singer. Um, uh, you know her daughter's father, and she has a restraining order, and he keeps popping up every once in a while, and he keeps doing weird, goofy stuff. So she doesn't feel comfortable where she lives. So she's been moving back and forth, and I respect all of that because stalking and stalkers are real. My problem is that. At some point, that cannot um, 
Yeah, keep the restraining order active, fine. But that cannot rule your life, especially now that you have a husband. Um, I, I just feel like things need to change because that whole situation is insane. She has multiple places. She goes from place to place. But then Marlo was saying, yeah, I hear what she's saying with that. But if you go and let him know where you are, um, you know, thanks to social media, he could pop up there too. So what's the difference? I said, first off, security. Second off, this is your house we're talking about. Third off, I don't know what's third. But Marlo at the table, while Eva wasn't there, was also talking about how Eva has, what was it, Miami? Not Miami, maybe California, LA. She has, she's, she said that she's double and dabble, but no, she's, um, you know, definitely bisexual, has a lesbian relationship, had multiple lesbian relationships in California that are active now. I'm thinking, Marlo, where are you getting this information from? Even if it's kind of true, because the thing is, I don't think that it's not true. I don't think any of the stuff that was said about Eva for the most part was untrue. And Eva didn't say that all of those lies. She said it doesn't matter if there's tr small truths in every portion of it. It's dramatized. And I said, that's fair. But Eva was upset. She came back to the table. Nini talked to her. And like I said, I believe that she probably wouldn't have left if Nini told her. She probably would have been just as mad, but maybe she wouldn't have left. And I'm not mad at Tanya. I'm not going to do that because I like her too much. Um, but that situation was just very weird. And the issue isn't any of them, actually. It's not e e Eva, it's not Nini, it's not Tanya, the issue, Cynthia, the issue is Marlo. Marlo, being that messy, she does not like Eva, so she's going to use this against her. And Eva said, okay, let's go, let's go, What? what's the actual problem? You're broke, your credit's bad, and Tanya's like, who, who cares? <laughs> it's called real life. <laughs> but that was it for now. I'm sure that there are small little things that I missed. But please like, comment, subscribe, and come back next week for the season finale. Thank God.